I'm a high functioning adult with ADHD, or at least that's what I've been told I am. And I'm not sure if I really understand the terminology high functioning, because there's been lots of things that I've realised looking back over my adult life where I've certainly felt like I haven't been functioning at all, let alone high functioning. Hi, I'm Bev and in this video I want to just talk through some of the signs I think that I've seen throughout my adult life, looking back now with a late diagnosis of ADHD, at some of the signs that the ADHD was there all along that I completely missed. A couple of days ago I was having lunch with my daughter and we were both diagnosed in adulthood with ADHD about 18 months ago. So my diagnosis was January 2023 and I was 56. Her diagnosis was in June 23 and she was 32. And we were talking about what that diagnosis has meant for us, how it's shaped us, how we've dealt with it. And in that conversation, I talked. we talked a lot about masking and how we've been able to an extent, not fully, but to an extent, lift the mask. One of the things that has kind of annoyed me and probably upset me a bit since getting my diagnosis are the number of people who have said, probably without any negative intention, but have said to me, oh, I would never have thought you had ADHD. You didn't show any signs of ADHD. And it's so invalidating. And I know that that's probably not their intention, but it still feels a little bit like it, it, it kind of dismisses the diagnosis. And I understand it. I think it's probably a lack of awareness on their part about what ADHD in women really looks like or what ADHD in general looks like. But I also think it's probably a lot to do with the fact that as a high functioning adult with ADHD, I've probably been able to find ways to mask my traits at least the negative ones, and also strategies without even realising they were strategies to support ADHD, just strategies that have helped me to push through and be able to perform to a higher standard, even though it didn't feel natural all of the time. So today I just wanted to really share five things that I've been reflecting on that make a lot of sense now that I've got my diagnosis, but were certainly things that I've felt an element of shame about in the past, and I've certainly tried to hide those traits. So when I think about those people who have made the comment, oh, I would never have thought you had ADHD, I can understand why they would say that because I think as a high functioning adult with ADHD, I've done a damn good job over the years of hiding all of those negative traits. Okay, the first trait that I now recognise as being linked to my ADHD is being incredibly bad with money. I find it very, very hard to track my finances. I find it very hard to save money. I have definitely got better over the years. However, in my early adult years, money felt like water. It was so fluid. As soon as I received any money, it had to flow out of me again. So, you know, my finances were always day to day, month to month. I was never able to plan and save for the future because that didn't feel like it. Well, it just, A, it took planning, which I'm not very good at, but it also took discipline, which I'm not very good at. And I would have needed to be able to see a benefit further out into the distance. And one of the things that I've realised with my ADHD is I have a very strong need for immediate reward or instant gratification. So when money comes in, 
my tendency is to want to spend it because I get a, a dopamine buzz from spending. And that has led over the years to impulsive spending and poor money management. I was in debt by the age of 18. As soon as I started working and I had a wage coming in, albeit not a very big wage, it, this was in the mid 80s, but there, there were credit cards being offered all of the time as well as store credit cards. Now, I don't know if things have changed, I'm guessing they haven't, but I don't remember getting any financial education at school about how to manage my finances. We got a lot of education about how to use a slide rule. Anybody younger than a certain age won't even know what that is. But we were never taught how to manage our finances. And my mum and dad weren't great at it either, probably because they, looking back, probably also were neurodivergent. So I didn't get good financial education from them and I didn't get it from school. Plus added into that all of the traits of ADHD and my financial management is rubbish. <laughs> now, the strategy that I found has worked best for me over the years was to abdicate responsibility for my finances to my husband, Mark, who is very, very disciplined and very good with money and has been the reason why we are in a very comfortable financial position now because left to me, I promise you, we would not have been. But abdication really isn't a great strategy. When I started my business six years ago, my husband very kindly said to me, if you're, up, if you're grown up enough to have a business, you are grown up enough to manage your finances. So I've had to learn and I have got better at it. That's my business finances and I still find that I can fall into the impulsive buying trap. I definitely get that dopamine buzz from sitting in the evening watching TV scroll on my thro throne <laughs> scrolling on my phone um, and doing the online shopping thing I, and I'm very aware of that now but one of the best things about finding out through the diagnosis that ADHD plays a part in that is that now I can rationalize that better without feeling the guilt and shame that I've had surrounding that all of my adult life so it does does the diagnosis mean I suddenly got better at managing my money? Hell no, but it does mean that I've got, I've got a, an awareness now that it is a trait that I can fall into. That's a pigeon on the roof, did you hear that? So, you know, that's, that's one area that I never felt like I was high functioning. And if anything, I felt like I was high failing. The second trait, I guess, that kind of taps into the first one, but shows up in more than just the need to spend, is a need for that instant gratification, that instant reward, that instant dopamine hit. And the way that this has shown up for me in the past is, is really around things like very fast decision making, without really thinking things through. Impulsive behaviours, I guess. R some risky behaviours maybe, certainly in my younger days. Risky behaviours around driving as well, so sort of driving too fast, taking risks, taking chances that give me that adrenaline, whoosh, you know, that instant sort of dopamine hit. That is something that I've had to kind of learn to, to cope with and deal with. Also, in other ways that that sort of need for instant gratification has shown up has been in eating. You know, my, my eating habits, my weight has been very up and down throughout my whole life. And a lot of that has been to do with impulsive eating. I can't honestly say that it's been binge eating or disordered eating in its kind of clinical sense. Things like in my career, um, I never really planned any of the jobs that I applied for. They were always impulsive. I would have this, I, I've had enough, I need a change. I look for another job and I would never really think it all the way through. And there's only really one role that I ever had that I can honestly say it was a planned process. You know, a job that I really researched and I actually applied for this particular role three times before I got it. That's the only role I've ever had that has been 
thought through and planned for. But most of my life, everything I've ever done has been based on sort of impulsive, poorly thought through decisions. Now, I will caveat that with most of the time, they've been pretty gut led. And for the most part, they've turned out to be good decisions. I have though, fallen foul of the not so good decisions when they've been impulsive and I haven't really listened to my gut. Okay, so not all of the impulsive decisions that I make have been bad ones. When I decided to do my bachelor's degree at the age of 48, uh, that was a very impulsive decision. I'd taken a group of adult students who wanted to enrol in the uh, degree program for the military and I'd taken a group of service personnel up to Edinburgh and it was while I was sat there on that day just basically hosting this group that I'd taken up there my brain went I wonder if I could do that I wonder if I'd be able to enroll on this degree program I impulsively spoke to the head of faculty and said look is there any chance I could do this am I too late to apply for this program no I don't think so if you've got the prerequisite qualifications but you'll need to be quick because we're, we're literally closing the doors on this today so I literally drove up to Edinburgh not enrolled on a, a degree program and then by the time we drove back I was enrolled on the degree program and I remember driving all the way back thinking in my mind oh my god what have you done I hadn't had a great education at school and again probably due to when I look back due to my ADHD I kind of dropped out of uh, secondary school I got very poor um, exam results and I'd always had a bit of a chip on my shoulder about higher education not being smart enough all of the rest of it and there I was I'd impulsively enrolled on this degree program and I was driving home thinking how the hell am I going to do this and I went on to do very very well at that and got top marks in my class and you know so, so not all of my uh, impulsive decisions have been bad ones but impulsivity has definitely been something that has been a pattern throughout my whole life and now understanding where that impulsivity comes from I'm much more able to recognize it and they're not always 100% right. So that's uh, definitely something that makes me feel like maybe I don't function well. I'm not high functioning on the impulsivity stakes. And again, a lot of those decisions that I've made, the ones that haven't been so good, have been kind of filled with a bit of shame and embarrassment when they haven't worked out as planned. Another area where I've not felt very high functioning is in terms of understanding and interpreting verbal instructions you know if you ask for directions from somebody and they give you a list of directions I cannot take them in there's an awful lot of executive brain work needed or executive functioning needed to remember and process and sequence all of those instructions and I find it very 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 difficult to do that and this showed up sometimes if I was on like training courses where, you know, if you've ever been on a training course where they've put you into groups and there's a scenario, a problem solving scenario, and you have to go and work together as a, a group to solve that problem. I always found myself really, really struggling to take in the instructions. And quite often they were just verbal instructions uh, or they may have given us verbal instructions and, and also written instructions, but not given anybody the time to actually read the written instructions. And I would often feel on the back foot because everybody else would then dive in and start solving the problem. And I would feel like I didn't even really understand what it is we were trying to achieve. And I never felt confident enough to say, can we just stop for a minute because I didn't catch the instructions? Because you don't want to be that person who's so stupid they didn't listen to the instructions. And sometimes it probably was that I'd zoned out a bit on the instructions, but other times it was just that they were a bit like directions being given. I couldn't take them in, process them, assimilate them quick enough 
to solve the, or, or, or to dive into the problem solving element, it was, it, it always felt like there was, that, that there was something wrong with me. Now I realise that that's just that my prefrontal part of my brain, the, the part that has to do all of the work to assimilate and it, you know, break down all of those instructions, understand them, process them, and put them into a format that my brain can understand. I just couldn't do that quick enough. And the amount of embarrassment and shame that I felt because of that. So I would find that um, somehow, I don't really understand how, I would I would always seem to be able to catch up, but it would take me, I, I always felt like I was lagging behind and I'd have to work so, so hard to try and get back up to the speed that everybody else was moving. Now, with hindsight, I, I guess there were probably other people in the group doing exactly that. What I think I should have done and what I try to do now, although thankfully I'm not very often in that position anymore, A, I'd be more willing now with that formal diagnosis under my belt to say, I need a little bit more time to understand these instructions or I need to be able to write down because actually even reading the instructions, sometimes I need to, to write things down myself so that I'm interpreting them in my way. And I think there would be strategies that I could put in place now that I wasn't confident enough to put in place before. You know, I never felt really like I was high functioning in those situations. I felt like I was high failing. Another area that I think I was high failing rather than high functioning was in starting projects but never finishing them. I, over the years, have had so many hobbies that have started the impulse of buying and the need for instant kind of ooh, interest just to find that after a week or two, a month or two, sometimes six months, I'd lose interest in that hobby. And I find that this happens not just with hobbies, but also with business projects, and you know house projects and and I've in the past always put that down to laziness not realizing that it's an attention issue it's an interest issue some of them aren't that important you know if it's a hobby is it really the end of the world if I don't finish that bit of tapestry I started or if that jumper's half finished obviously there's a cost involved but it's not the end of the world but when it comes to projects for your business, for example, I've got so many half-finished courses that would be really helpful to people. And I've created half of it, but I haven't finished it. You know, when I look back at all of the half-finished projects and the failed attempts at things, it's very hard to feel high-functioning and very easy to feel like another thing I failed at. The final thing that I want to talk about today in terms of not feeling high functioning is the number of times that I've not paid a parking fine on time or not remembered to return information that I've been asked for on time or ordering something online that I just didn't want to keep but then forgetting or not getting it re you know back and returned on time and ended up having to hang on to it because I'd missed the returns deadline and this kind of ties in with the financial you know poor financial management as well because they talk about the ADHD tax um, and the fact that it you know so much more things cost us so much more because of our lack of ability to remember to do the things we need to do like paying a parking fine. Most times when you get a parking fine, you get a reduced uh, fine if you pay it off within a certain time. I know I need to. I know how important it is to do some of these things. 
but I either forget or I find it really, really difficult to mobilise myself to actually pay the damn thing. It shows up in also things like answering emails if I get a complicated or what I perceive to be a complicated email that needs a lot of brain work to kind of gather what I need to do together to send back to somebody. I often find that I forget or just don't get around to returning uh, the, the, the email or replying to the email. And it's, it's often it's really important stuff and it's not that I'm not aware that they're important. I really, really struggle to, to do the thing. It doesn't make you feel like you're high functioning. It makes you feel like you're high failing. That sort of task avoidance, task paralysis. There's an awful lot of embarrassment and shame around that trait but you know all of these things I think I did a very very good job of hiding masking what is what's exhausting is the embarrassment and the shame that we carry all of the time because of these things so there's something weirdly liberating now that I've had the diagnosis and that I talk more about this in feeling that I don't have to hide it, that I can open up about it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, for all of those things that I've spoken about, those traits in me that aren't great, at 58 years old, nearly 59 years old, I've had a successful life. I've never struggled to hold down a job and I know this can be difficult for some people with ADHD I've never struggled to excel in my job I've done so many things that I'm proud of that I don't want to let those elements of my ADHD that I'm not so proud of cancel everything out it is about a balance and I think it's really important certainly for me and my own confidence and my own self-esteem that I recognize that they're challenges and over my life I've managed those challenges and I've managed them well and maybe I am high functioning whatever that even means maybe I have been able to put in strategies that mean that yes they've been challenging but I've been able to still live a successful fulfilling life they've not been what's defined my life they've just been a challenging aspect that I've had to manage anyway thank you so much for listening this was a bit of a long one today if you're still sticking around I appreciate you very very much I hope if you are late diagnosed ADHD um, that some of this may you may resonate with and maybe it'll help you if you're still wearing the mask to feel more comfortable about letting it go not feeling like you've got to be riddled with guilt and shame because of the challenges of your ADHD and I'd love to know you know what are your thoughts on this term high functioning is it real or is it just a sign that we're intelligent people and we've managed to find ways and strategies to help us manage the bits that we find challenging. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Until next time, take care.